Hubert Hurkacz is boring. The Polish tennis player has a media presence that would make a hermit weep, because how can a tennis player step into a press conference with no press? Especially with a player people say is one to watch. Is the low media presence because he sucks? Well, no. So how good is Hubert Hurkacz actually? Is he truly one to watch, or is he just as bad as his media presence? Let's find out. The Beginning Publicity is part of every sport, and it is something that Hubert Hurkacz, aka Mr. Nice Guy, comfortably sucks at. The Polish tennis player was born on 11th February 1997 to Zofia Malazuska Hurkacz and Krzysztof Hurkacz in Wrocław, Poland. You could say he is part of tennis royalty, as his mother won the junior tennis championship in Poland, and one of his uncles was a professional at the sport too. Even Hubert admitted his ability to thrive in tennis came from his family. He said, the sporting genes, the motivation in the family, the love for the sport, I think they have helped me a lot. His mom introduced him to tennis when he was five, and she and his dad began to train him. Eventually, his parents got teachers for him, but Hubert wasn't sure he would play professionally until an incident occurred. Hubert watched Roger Federer on television. After, he decided to pursue tennis professionally. By 2014, the tennis player's talent had become apparent, and he was even seen as one of the best youngsters Poland had, alongside Kamil Marszak and Jan Zielinski. The tennis player debuted with the Bog Boys in 2018, and his performances were somewhat explosive. Hubert smashed Tennis Sandgren in the first round of the main draw of the French Open. That win would be his first Grand Slam victory and also the first victory in any ATP main draw event. However, he soon tasted his first loss when he lost to Marin Cilic in four sets in the second round of the competition. Then, the athlete debuted in the US Open and qualified for the Grand Slam main draw, winning against Patrick Smith, Igor Gerasimov, and Pedro Martinez Portero to get to the first round. Hubert then won against Stefano Travaglia, who retired from the competition due to the extreme heat. However, like in the French Open, Hubert lost again to Marin Cilic, but this time in the second round. The athlete then competed in the 2018 Next Generation ATP Finals in Milan. There, he beat Joe Munar, but lost to Francis Tiafo and Stefano Tsitsipas. At the end of the season, he got nominated for the ATP Newcomer of the Year Award. Not bad for the new guy, eh? As the tennis professional made his senior debut, he forgot he needed to translate or extend his talent to also being on the media. You might think, so what, as long as he shows up on the court? Well, maybe you have a point, but imagine this. A tennis player who had recently had a surprise win at the Miami Masters event and not one journalist asked him a question. Embarrassing both for the player and the sport, isn't it? This is what happened to Hubert in 2021, and get this, after that period, his ranking went up to 9, and the win itself pushed him into the first 20. That's not all. The man went on to become the highest-ranking Polish man in history. He was also the first Polish to win an ATP. In that 2021 competition, the man destroyed Stefano Tsitsipas, Andrei Rublev, Janek Sinner, Milos Raonic, and Denis Shapovalov. Do you now see how scandalous that is? This is a player who has been consistently going up the ranks and defeating higher-placed competitors even before his 2021 title win. And if you like to watch more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more. In 2019, the tennis player opened his season at the Maharashtra Open in Pune, India, continuing at the Canberra Challenger where he defeated Ilya Ivashka in the final to clinch the title. Hubert then debuted in the Australian Open before moving on to the Dubai Championships, where he defeated the number one seeded player of the competition, Kei Nishikori. Beating Nishikori would mark the first of many wins the Polish would have against higher-placed opponents. The man had a taste for slaying giants and went on a spree. Hubert would reach another career milestone in 2019. He again beat Nishikori in the Indian Wells Open and Denis Shapovalov, who was also better placed than him in the fourth round. Defeating Denis allowed Hubert to play in the quarterfinals of an ATP Masters 1000 event for the first time as a professional. However, he lost to the man who would inspire him to become a professional tennis player, Roger Federer, in the quarterfinals. After this participation, Hubert rose to 54 in the world singles ranking. He had vengeance on his mind. He would bring down Roger whatever it took. Hubert continued his fine form, beating higher-ranked Marco Cecchinato in the first round of the 2019 Eastbourne International. The Polish tennis player achieved this feat in just slightly over an hour. Then at Wimbledon, he battled pound for pound with the then number two Novak Djokovic for two sets before Djokovic got the better of him. But Hubert was not done doing two things, beating better-placed players and also rising through the ranks. Pity he didn't add a third, having a better media presence. The athlete beat Taylor Fritz and Stefano Tsitsipas at the Rogers Cup. However, Tsitsipas would have vengeance in the third round of the Shanghai Masters. Then came 2020, which saw Hubert rise again through the rank after some exciting performances. 
He beat Dominic Team, Diego Schwartzman, and Borna Cioric at the 2020 ATP Cup, with the trio all placed higher than him on the world rankings. With his performances at the ATP Auckland Open, Australian Open, and so on, the Polish climbed up to the 28th best tennis player in the world. But Hubert wasn't satisfied, he wanted more. And that more led him to becoming the fifth Polish man to reach the Wimbledon quarterfinals in 2021. He then had his revenge. He beat Roger Federer in that quarterfinals in three sets. With that win, Hubert became the second man to beat Roger in straight sets at Wimbledon. On this special court against Roger, it's always when you're a kid, it's like dream come true to play him. So. Since Mario Ancic achieved this in 2002, Hubert's match against Roger would be his final professional singles match. Hubert's search for more would also lead him to win his first ATP Masters 1000 doubles title in 2021, partnering with Felix Auger Aliassime. 2021 was just too good a year for him in terms of performance, ranking, and titles. 2022 wasn't that much different, too, as he won his second ATP Masters 1000 doubles title in 2022, this time working with John Eisner. Presented by Ita doubles champions Hubert Hurkacz and John Eisner. Although his ranking would drop to 10. The player won his second ATP Masters 1000 singles in 2023 in Shanghai. It's the first Shanghai semi final for Hubi Hurkacz. But his rank has fallen to 11. So we ask is Hubert's more enough? Is it enough to call him good? How good is Hubert Hurkacz actually? The short answer is yes. You don't get to where he is, defeat those he has defeated without having an enormous amount of talent. That man is a serve god or serve bot as some people call him, or the ace messiah, our own nickname for him. We describe him as that because this 2023 season alone, he leads the ace count. The man who had around 985 has now crossed over 1,000 aces, leading the closest person to him, Taylor Fritz, with a fair margin. Sensational, isn't he? The Polish man is now in the company of the elite like John Eisner, Ivo Karlovic, and Roger Federer. However, he is ways off from being like those men. Could he do it? It'll be interesting to find out. Nonetheless, the Polish player has his style, and the serve is a big part of it. This style helped him beat Andrei Rublev to win his second ATP Masters 1000 singles in 2023 in Shanghai, which he won in three sets. In that match, the player had 20 aces and won 80% of his first serve points. So yeah, the player is good, but if he still wants to be great and wants more, he has to be better than he currently is. Currently, you can argue that he is a one-trick pony. No, we don't exaggerate, especially if you look at his 2023 performances. He is shown to be great at serving, but he hasn't been good enough when it comes to breaking serve, which takes his game longer than it should. Then, when those games go long, he doesn't win the tiebreakers. And when you compare this with a great player like Novak Djokovic, you see that Hubert still has has ways to go. Him losing to lower placed opponents too isn't helping. Nonetheless, when the player goes against those better placed than him, they don't find defeating him quite easy. When he played Novak at Wimbledon this year, their match lasted about three hours. That match was a tense one. He had four close sets, which included two tiebreakers. Even Novak, who eventually could edge the Polish out, was stunned by his performance. Novak, in his interview after the match, said he was serving incredibly well. I knew that he's a big server and he's a fantastic player on, on, on the grass. I do not recall being so helpless on the return games, to be honest. I knew that he is a big server, and he is a fantastic player on grass particularly, but I did not expect him to serve this well and this accurately. Credit to him. It wasn't only Novak at the end of such an intense performance from Hubert. It was the same for Carlos Alcaraz in Toronto. Hubert pushed Carlos hard. Their match had three sets, with Carlos requiring two tiebreaks to beat the Polish. So, is Hubert actually good? Yes. Is he that good? Arguable. Will he be one of the greats? That remains to be seen. Hubert Hurkacz was born into an athletic family, and he is showing that the athletic gene didn't skip over him. The player has had a career where he has two ATP singles and doubles titles. On top of that, he has beaten highly placed players. And while he is currently 11 on the rankings, he has peaked at 9. So, how good is Hubert Hurkacz actually? It's quite good. But can he be even better than this? Or will he continue to go down the table? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.